Meet Rita. Rita was allegedly forced to have sex with perhaps the most powerful man in the world of professional wrestling, and she'll tell us all about it. Now, Rita, you were one of the first referees, female referees, in the WWF. I am the first and still only uh, in the country, to the best of my knowledge. So you got between these two uh, hulks and kept them apart and kept the game going. Yeah, yeah. As the first woman to break into that previously all-male uh, area, you certainly stood the chance of making it very, very big. Becoming a celebrity in a, in a business, because wrestling obviously is more business than sport, in a business where the celebrities really do generate substantial income. What were the promises made to you by WWF officials? Uh, the first day in that I had met Vince McMahon, the first day in his office. Vince McMahon is the... Vince McMahon is the owner of owner. the WWF. Okay. There he is, a familiar is, face to anyone with a TV. Yeah, Vince McMahon, what Vince says goes. That's the way it is. Nice dimple, Vince. Cool. Uh, I was offered a half a million dollar a year contract. Uh, I was told that I was going to be so big, I, my name would be a household item. Everyone would know who I was. His exact words were, how are you going to feel the first time you walk, down, walk past a newsstand and see your face on the cover of Time magazine? I mean, he just blew it up to be so unbelievable, you know? I, but I knew it was possible because I was a novelty. I was the only female. There came a time when you and Vince McMahon were allegedly, I stress allegedly because he denies that you were allegedly in a limousine. Tell us what happened. Uh, after a period of time, Vince, in all his promises, I was getting less and less work. I'd try to call the Federation, try calling Vince to find out why, and I could never get through to him. I knew the only way that I could really get to Vince was to go to Poughkeepsie, which at the time is where they, f they filmed all the, tele uh, I'm sorry, all the television matches. Poughkeepsie in upstate New York? In upstate New York, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I went to Poughkeepsie. I seen Vince in the hall. I had asked him if I could speak with him. He told me at that point that he was really busy. But when, after the matches, to follow him to a restaurant, there's a, a Greek diner a few miles up the road. Uh, and I did. I got to the diner. Um, Vince was there, his limo driver, four or five cameramen, other people, and myself were sitting at a big round table. Um, they were talking what they were going to put on the show that week, what they were going to cut, a lot of technical things that I really didn't know anything about. When it seemed as though they were done talking, I brought up my career with Vince and asked you know, what was going to happen here. And Vince just kind of looked at me, put his finger up to his mouth and kind of did a, in a hush hush. So, of course, I did. I mean, Vince is, he's it. He makes you or breaks you. Uh, a few minutes later, I went into the ladies' room. When I came out into the corridor of the ladies' room, Vince was standing there, told me that he definitely wanted to talk to me about my career, said that he definitely neglected doing something with me at this point, and that he wanted me to follow him because he didn't want to talk there at the diner. There were quite a few people from the Federation there. It made sense. I can understand that. We left there. I followed Vince over to a Denny's uh, in a parking lot. I got out of my car, walked to the front of the car. Vince's driver got out and opened the door, and I thought Vince was going to get out. But instead, Vince said to me, no, Rita, come in here. He says, we just sat in a diner for a couple hours. I really don't want coffee. He says, we'll just sit and talk here. We're sitting in a parking lot. I mean, it, I didn't think much of it. I got in a limo with him. We got into the limo, Vince started talking about magazines, uh, t-shirts, wrestling dolls. We don't have, a, don't have a, fe uh, a referee doll at this point. A female would be great. On and on and on. Again, starts talking about a half a million dollar a year contract. Next thing I know, Vince McMahon is unzipping his pants. I was pretty shocked at that point. I, you know, I mean, we're talking profession here and, and suddenly he wants more than just profession. Vince continued to, you know, if you want a half a million dollar contract, you're going to have to satisfy me, and this is the way things have to go. Vince grabbed my hand, kept trying to put my hand on him. Um, I was scared. My wrist, at the end, my wrist was all purple, black and, black and blue. Things just didn't, he just, God, he just didn't stop. This man just didn't stop, you know. A half a million dollar a year contract. How's your daughter going to go to college? Of course, she doesn't have to go to college. 
You know, <laughs> now, I left a $30,000 a year job on Vince McMahon's word. He knew that. What is your allegation, Rita? State it. My allegation right now is sexual harassment. I was forced into oral sex with Vince McMahon. When I couldn't complete his desires, he got really angry, started ripping to off my, my jeans, pulled me on top of him and told me again, if I wanted a half a million dollar a year contract, I had to satisfy him. He could make me or break me. And if I didn't satisfy him, I was blackballed. That was it. I was done. When Vince was all said and done, Vince just sat back and said, at one point when I first met Vince, let me back up here just a little bit. The very first time I met Vince, I was told that if I had any sexual relationships with anyone in the Federation, I was done. My career was done. I was engaged. I had no problem with that. When Vince was said and done, Vince looked at me and said, do you remember what I told you about having sexual relationships with anyone? Well, you just did. And he just sat back and had this big smile and this big grin and just started laughing at me. Rita, of course, the woman who has claimed that Vince McMahon uh, forced her, uh, number one, to uh, perform oral sex and then raped her in the backseat of his limousine. Rita, when did it happen? Uh, this happened July 15th, 1986. So here you have a situation where six years has passed since the alleged encounter. That, of course, is Mr. McMahon's strongest defense, Rita. If it really happened, why did you wait? Well, I, you know, I can't answer her question as far as the Mets and what happened no, but I there. want you to speak but for yourself on me, the question of delay. What happened with me is at that time, you people don't understand wrestling. Nobody talks, for one. No one talks. It's a complete hush-hush world. I did go to see an attorney. I was told at that time that basically this was going to come down to my word against his because I had no proof. I had to weigh that. At the time, my mother was on oxygen 24 hours a day. My dad had a bad heart. And I didn't think either one of my parents could have been put through it, especially at that time where no one was opening up. Everything was so quiet. One of the things that we found, Rita, and this is to you and Murray, is that the World Wrestling Federation, like any big business, when confronted with an, a, uh, an allegation or a scandal, does have the capacity to, uh, to put it uh, maybe harshly, buy off uh, potential complainants. Were you ever offered a cash settlement? Uh, I wasn't offered a cash settlement, no. Murray?